Hello and welcome. Good afternoon to all of you out there. I am excited that you are joining me as we think through the lens of a marine engineer today and as we build our very own model paddle boat. Now, my name is Mrs. Weistrack or Mrs. V, and I have the wonderful opportunity of working with students from the Chula Vista Elementary School District. Together, we get to learn and explore a variety of topics that are all related to water. Today's live event wouldn't be possible without the continued support of our friends at both Sweetwater Authority and Otai Water District. So I wanna just give them a quick shout out and thank them for all that they do to supply us with safe and reliable water every day. Now, during today's event, there are a variety of ways in which you can participate. Today, we'll go step by step as we build a model paddle boat. We also have my friends, Mr. Garcia, Mrs. Hughes, and Mr. Bruder, who are moderating our Q&A section. So you can always join in the fun in our Q&A section, leave appropriate comments, responses, or questions, and they are happy to respond to you there. Finally, stick around till the very end and assess or test your knowledge as you join in our live Kahoot game. Now, living in Chula Vista or San Diego County, we're really, really close to the coast. We have a harbor, we have a port, we have where boats go, they're always coming and going. So let's check out this quick video to get us thinking a little bit more about the variety of boats or vessels that people might use on water. those different boats makes me want to get out there on the water. So now in that video, we saw a variety of boats. Another word we might use when we're talking about boats and ships is a vessel. A vessel is basically a large ship or, or a ship or a large boat. Now you probably know a bit about different types of vessels. Different types of vessels serve different types of purposes. A vessel might be designed to ship products, um, like you see in this cargo ship. Um, they might be designed to move people for transportation, as you might see in this sailing ship. Maybe even for fishing, possibly for recreation, or even for the military. So I want to find out from you in our Q&A, let me know what kind of vessels or water vessels are you familiar with? There's lots of different names out there, so I want to find out. Share with me in the Q&A what type of water vessels do you know about? And what is that vessel designed to do? Each of these different vessels, ships, cargo ships, sailing ships, galleys, they all have different purposes. So the ones you know about, what are they and what is their purpose? Go ahead and share with me in that Q&A section. Now, with all of those vessels you're thinking about right now, it makes me wonder who designs these vessels. Now, who is responsible for de designing them and making them float on water, float and move on water? Well, that's the responsibility of marine engineers and naval architects. Let's take a quick look at this video to find out more about what marine engineers and naval architects um, do and what their responsibilities are. Planning precisely how to keep an enormous ocean-going vessel stable and safe in high seas while carrying giant loads of cargo is just one of the many tasks of marine engineers and naval architects. They usually specialize in designing and building a particular type of ship, from giant aircraft carriers to submarines, and from 15-foot sailboats to ocean tankers. 
Marine engineers are responsible for the internal systems of a ship, such as propulsion, electrical, refrigeration, and steering, while naval architects design the ship itself, including the form, structure, and stability of hulls. These architects also lead the teams that create new ship designs. Marine engineers and naval architects typically work in offices where they have access to computer software and other tools to analyze projects and design solutions. Sometimes they go to sea on ships to test their designs or to maintain ships they've built. Uh, so the design and the development of these vessels is the responsibility of a marine engineer. In particular, a marine engineer is concerned with the design of the propulsion machines and the power supply system. So they're basically trying to figure out how do they get these vessels to move? Typically, you would need a bachelor's degree about four years at a university to be able to work as a marine engineer. So as you can see from um, our career card here, we have those different RISEC categories and themes. So you can see here that this is a very realistic, hands-on type career as well as one where you're investigating and problem solving all of the time. Now, as you heard earlier, it takes a team of people who work and collaborate on the designs of these different vessels. Naval architects and marine engineers are responsible for different aspects of the design. Let's hear from Amanda Dayton, who is actually both a naval architect and a marine engineer. There is a difference between a naval architect and a marine engineer. A naval architect is more focused on structure and stability and longitudinal strength and uh, the how the boat is actually put together so that it doesn't break or crack. And a marine engineer is more focused on the equipment and how it runs, um, the propulsion, the uh, support systems to, to make the boat inhabitable by people. So they're worried about electrical, they're worried about HVAC, and as well as all the propulsion machinery and auxiliary machinery. And th what's nice is that I have the best of both worlds. So I can do all of the structures and I understand how the structures work and I understand also a bit about how the machinery works. Pretty cool how she can talk and know about the structure and the design of the structure, as well as knowing how to work with the machinery involved with these different vessels. Now, when I learn about new careers, I like to reflect and think about what I would enjoy or not enjoy about specific careers. One thing I think is really cool about a marine engineer is that they work with their hands and minds. They're using computer systems, they're working with different types of machinery, and that's something I find really interesting. So what is something you find interesting about a career in marine engineering? I'd love to hear that too. You see lots of images here, um, things that a marine engineer might be seeing or doing um, in their career. So share with me, if you find this career interesting, let me know what are those different aspects that um, spark your interest. Now, as you heard Amanda mention, marine engineers are concerned about the propulsion system of a vessel. Propulsion is the force that moves something forward. So the propulsion system is what's gonna move this vessel from one place to another. So when you see and take a look at this cargo ship, that's using a system with an engine to move from one location to another. This sailing ship here can use wind and sails, so it's wind powered. We can also come up with other vessel designs that you see here, this new uh, technology making a solar ship. Or we can even think about a propulsion system as being human powered, as you see with this galley, where people were using oars to move that ship from one location to another. Now, what, so earlier, sorry about that. So earlier I asked you about all types of boats and ships or vessels that you were familiar with. And I wanted to know what the different purposes were. So let's go ahead and take a moment here and check in with Mr. Bruder See what you guys know about, see what kind of vessels you have either experienced or learned about, or you can tell me more about. So Mr. Bruder, let's go ahead and check in. We wanted to find out what kind of vessels um, students were familiar with and also what that vessel was designed to do. Hey, Mrs. Bystrack, yeah, we have a few to, to share. Um, 
one of the ones that was noted by Leonardo and a few others was um, large cruise ships that take people out on vacations. Ah, definitely. I love when I get to go um, into San by San Diego Bay and I'll see the Disney cruise ship. You can see those Mickey Mouse ears. It's kind of cool to see it out there. Uh, another one that was shared was uh, boats for recreation, like and to go fishing. Ah, fishing is another one, right? So different fishing boats, recreation. Awesome, awesome. We also had one of our uh, attendees share the the small like law enforcement or police coast guard type boats as well. Ah, that's right. I think we saw in the video, right? Some of those law enforcement police ones. A lot of these different um, boats or vessels that you're talking about can all be found right here in our very own bays and harbors. Which is pretty cool living in San Diego County that we get to check those things out. <laughs> and then I believe there was one more that you had in the pictures there was the cargo ships that transport like different supplies to us. Definitely. We have that port where cargo ships are definitely coming in and out constantly through our um, different um, ports here. So yeah, there's lots of different ones out there. I love how you guys are thinking about all of these. As you're mentioning these, I'm just trying to think about all the different propulsion systems, all the thought and energy and work that people have put into these to get them moving from one place to another. It's pretty cool. So with that, Mr. Bruder, I think we're going to go ahead and move forward here. So now that we know a little bit about the work of a marine engineer, we're going to actually take on that role. So to help guide us, we'll work through the steps of this engineering design process. So we'll start off by asking some questions. We'll imagine some big potential ideas. We'll plan out our model and then we'll actually create it. Um, finally, as we're creating it, we'll test it and see if there's any improvements that we should be making to our design to um, serve our purpose or our problem or our different needs here. Which brings us to exactly that. Here is our challenge for today. So our problem or our need is that we want to transport people across a uh, cargo or people across a body of water. So our solution for that today is to build a prototype or a model of a paddle boat. Now, let's start off by thinking like naval architects and marine engineers. They have to think a little bit differently than engineers who are designing for things on land because we have this whole idea that this is going to be moving and being um, on water. So what kind of questions do you think naval architects and marine engineers need to think about as they design water vessels and propulsion systems. So start thinking like a marine engineer or a naval architect. What are some things in, an, in the engineer process that you might need to think about a little differently because of the water involved? Now, here's some things that I was thinking. As a marine engineer begins to plan, I think they might begin to ask questions such as, uh, will this vessel be used above or below water? So I'm kind of thinking of like a submarine versus a ship or a vessel. Which materials might float or sink? Pretty important, right? If we're going to be moving things along, we can't have things sinking. What can I use to propel my vessel forward? So thinking about that propulsion system. Is it going to have sails? Is it going to have a paddle? What are we going to do here? What are we transporting across the water? Does that structure need to be built a certain way to hold cargo differently than people, right? Or maybe how much can that vessel hold? If I start adding cargo to it, is it gonna start to sink or will it stay buoyant above the water? So there's are lots of different questions that we might already think about as we're thinking about designing or working on the propulsion system of a vessel. Now that we have shared some of those wonderings, we can start to answer some of those questions as we move forward with this imagined stage of the design process. So it's time to imagine a potential solution to being able to transport something across a body of water. Now, in my brain, I wanted to share some ideas of some um, boats that I've seen before. I'm thinking about some vessels um, that look like this. They have the propulsion system towards the back. And here you notice in idea one and idea two, that propulsion system is some sort of paddle wheel. 
So I think I'm going to design my prototype or my model to have a similar plan. Now with those paddle boats in mind, here is what I am thinking for our plan. Now I did a quick sketch here thinking about some of the materials that I have around my house. So here's what I'm thinking I can do. First of all, I'm thinking I can use some sort of container that floats. So if I use a container that floats, that might be like the structure of my vessel. Then I'm thinking we could use like sticks or pencils or chopsticks somehow to kind of uh, stabilize that vessel once it's floating on water. To attach it all together, I'm thinking we can use some rubber bands and attach those together. And then finally, for my propulsion system, I have these disposable spoons. So I'm thinking if I work with the rubber band and work with these spoons in some way, I can generate or create that paddle that's going to generate some energy to propel that boat or vessel across a body of water. So with that, it looks like we have a plan um, ready for action. So it's time to build our paddle boat. So with that, let me share our material that we need for today. I just mentioned some of them. And so to build our own paddle boat, boat today, here's what you're going to need. You'll need two disposable spoons. You'll need uh, maybe a set of chopsticks or maybe uh, long dowels or um, unsharpened pencils or maybe even sharpened pencils. I don't think it matters as long as they're pretty long and longer than your container. So you'll also need five rubber bands, um, a pair of scissors, some tape, and then again for that vessel, a plastic container. So remember, if you need to grab any of those materials, feel free to do that right now. You can press pause and then you can resume once you have your materials and you are ready to build with us. But with that, if you have your materials, it looks like we are ready to go ahead and go step by step as we build our own model paddle boat. So here are all of my items that I have right here. Now the first step that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take two of our rubber bands and we're going to stick those around our container. So I'm going to go ahead and just stick those onto the container here. I'm going to break it up into thirds. So I'm going to use two rubber bands to kind of evenly split across this container. So let me add my next rubber band. All right. So I have my two rubber bands in place. There's kind of three separate sections here. I can kind of distribute that a little bit better if I want to. But let me go ahead and add those chopsticks. So I'm using chopsticks. Like I said, you might want to use pencils if you have those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and slide this chopstick right in under those rubber bands, leaving a little, maybe half an inch, an inch here at the tip and then a longer section, which is gonna be the back of my vessel. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. All right, now I'm feeling like these are not very um, stable or they might move here and there. So I'm gonna add a rubber band here in the front to kind of uh, give me some more support so that those chopsticks stay in place. It's going to make it a little more sturdy. All right, so there's the first one. Then I'm going to also add another one to the back so that these are not sliding around. So I'm going to add another rubber band to the back here. So I'm going to kind of stretch it out. I think for this one, it's kind of loose, so I'm going to double band it. So I'm going to pull on it, twist it. Hopefully it doesn't snap on me. <laughs> and I'm going to do a double band. Now it feels like it's pretty strong there. So I'm going to bring that all the way towards that back of the vessel there. All right, so you might be getting yours together, trying to balance it and line it up. So it looks like, like a naval architect, I have the structure of my vessel put together here. Now it's time to think like that marine engineer and figure out our propulsion system. So with that, I have, let me go ahead and move this vessel to the side. I have two spoons here, which I'm thinking if I connect them together, it can make that kind of rotation of a paddle. So let's see if I can, oh, without breaking these spoons, I'm going to 
carefully. So be careful. You might need to have uh, parent parental assistance or have someone helping you here. If it's a little tricky to cut through plastic, I'm going to cut here, leaving a little stem of that spoon. So I have a place for some tape and I'm going to go ahead and just cut that. I'm going to move my hand so I'm not cutting my hand. Let's see if I can cut through it without it flinging everywhere. Like I said, you might need assistance from someone. So there is one of piece of my paddle or propulsion system. Let me do that for the second one here as well. All right, I was scared it was gonna fly. <laughs> so next what I'm gonna do is I wanna think about my paddle. Now as my paddle's spinning, um, if I have them going in the same direction, one of these might kind of cup up kind of funny. So I'm gonna flip one facing down and one facing, facing upwards. And I'm gonna go ahead and just tape those together. So I'm gonna tape them together. So I have my duct tape here. All right, let me go ahead and put those together. I'm gonna see if I can just wrap this tape so that I have these two spoons working together. A little tricky there. Let's see if I can support it with a little bit more tape to make it a little more sturdy. Now, as you're doing this, you're gonna to have to think about some measurements. So this is the beginnings of our propulsion system. And remember in our plan, we're gonna put this towards the back of our boat. So when we stick a rubber band here, we wanna make sure that there's enough space that these spoons are gonna hit the back end of the boat. So we'll see if I need to make any uh, adjustments with that space there. All right, so I think I'm starting to get these two together. They feel pretty sturdy. So let's figure out a way to get our propulsion system in place. So there is my paddle. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this rubber band in the back here. I'm gonna leave it kind of towards the end, especially because I have some pretty long spoons. Now for that propulsion system, I'm gonna stick this in right over here in the middle. It looks like it's going to be bumping up against the back of my boat. That wouldn't be a, the greatest engineering design, having that paddle hitting the back of the boat. So there's a couple things I can do. I can move it back so I have more space or I could also try maybe clipping off a little um, from the top here. So I'm gonna cut some from the top just to make sure I have enough space for that paddle to not hit the back of our vessel. All right, things are flying here. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that energy system or that energy source by um, twirling. I'm gonna go ahead and tw twirl this propulsion system so we'll have that, what is that, that kinetic energy, that potential energy. All right. Now imagine this vessel on water. If I were to let this go, we're going to see this paddle move automatically. It's going to have that power source from that, all that tension in that rubber band. So if I let it go, oh, I'm scared to see what's going to happen. Here we go. Let's see. So we're going to see now. Um, try that out. Remember, you might have to explore a little bit as you're testing out your system. You might have to decide which way do you need to twirl it. I'm moving it away from the boat and let's see if I put this on a body of water, will that propel our boat or vessel forward? So let me go ahead and clean up my area here. I'm going to put my vessel down. I have a body of water. Um, so you might want to test out your vessel as well. So lots of different ways you can do this. I'm going to use a really small container here just for our purposes. But maybe if you need more space, depending on the size of your vessel, maybe you want to use like an inflatable pool or the bathtub, um, all of those different things. But if you use that water, make sure you recycle it, use it on a plant or something after. You know, we're always talking about water conservation. So I want to check this out. I want to see, first of all, the structural side, is this going to float? And then also, if I get my, um, if I release this paddle, will it propel my boat forward? So I'm going to go ahead and put it down. I'm going to release it. Hopefully I do not get splashed and let's see what happens. Uh, so I notice as it's spinning, it is pushing against the edge of this. So that's telling me it's propelling it forward. So I'm going to do that one more time. I think the more tension I have, the more you're going to be able to see 
it kind of trying to push and propel itself um, out of my bucket here. So let me do that one more time. I'm gonna add a lot, lot more tension to see, so to kind of give you that visual. And as I'm watching this, I can think about any improvements I might make. So I'm gonna go ahead and release it. There we go, I see it hitting, hitting, hitting. Think about any improvements. I'm wondering if this would go straight. I'm wondering how this could stop on its own. I'm also wondering if it runs out of all that tension, how would I keep my boat supply or that energy? How would I keep it going? So with that, you are probably testing out, working on trying out some different ideas here with your, um, with your vessels or your propulsion systems. So let me go ahead and switch streams here. Let's go back and ask ourselves, as I just showed you, I did some testing. I was trying to think about some improvements. So I want to find out from you, what are some things that you think you might do to change or work with a different design? Um, I'll show you another um, sample here of a test. I got to test this out in, in, in an inflatable pool so you can have another visual of seeing it being propelled forward. Maybe it might give you an idea of some improvements I might need to make to the same design that I just created with you today. Let's see how this one performs in a larger space. So when I'm checking out this design, I'm seeing in the pool, it starts to kind of go in a circular motion. So I think one of the improvements I might make or change is try to figure out like a naval architect and figure out a way that I can get some steering involved with this design so that we're not going in circles, that we're going from point A to point B, wherever, whatever, with whatever we're transporting. So with that, I feel like there's some improvements I can make to my design. I could even try to figure out, you know, adding some weight, adding cargo in there, adding people, testing it out to see, do I need to figure out some other materials I might need to use to keep it afloat with some more weight on it. So let me know in the Q&A, what are some improvements you might make to your design? Would you do anything differently? Would you want to create like a sailboat or something? What kind of propulsion system might you change um, if you were creating your a different type of model or vessel here? So let us know in the Q&A section. So awesome job. I hope you are not getting too wet around all of your devices here if you're testing those out. Again, if you're testing them out and using a lot of water, you might want to be sure to ask an adult if it's okay before you do that. So with that, it is now time to test our knowledge about with um, today's topic. So what I'm going to ask you to do, we're going to join in this Kahoot. I'm going to ask you in a separate window, not tab, because you still need to see my screen. So in the separate window or a separate device, you can go to www.kahoot.it or log into the Kahoot app and enter our game pin today, which is two, three, six, three, five, eight, six. So our moderators are going to put that in the Q&A. Again, um, go to kahoot.it and our pin is two, three, six, three, five, eight, six. Now with that, as you are logging in, let's check back with Mr. Bruder. I know I asked you some different questions um, throughout this presentation today. So earlier I was asking about the aspects um, that you may have found interesting about becoming a marine engineer or working in the marine engineering field. So let's go ahead and check in with Mr. Bruder and find out about some of those responses there. Mr. Bruder, are you there? Hey, Mrs. Bystrack. Yes, I am. Uh, I have a few that were shared with us while we have our friends logging into the Kahoot. Uh, one of the attendees shared that they liked the idea of being able to make different kinds of boats and adding different kinds of rooms and features to it. Awesome. So that sounds like kind of the, when they were talking about the uh, naval architect and the marine engineer, they have to kind of figure out those things together, right? The naval architect for the space 
but the engineer as far as you know keeping that person comfortable or those spaces with electricity and power or keeping what they say habitable i think is what she said it's pretty cool being able to have that creativity to design yeah another person uh, aiden shared like the idea of working with engines so the mechanical part of it ah so working with the engine part i know as i was learning some more information about marine engineers there's some pretty cool technology that um, these marine engineers are using, especially because sometimes they have to get to parts that are underwater. So without removing the full vessel or structure, they're able to use this really cool state of the art technology to figure out if, if something goes wrong with an engine, um, they're trying to fix it. And so it's pretty cool. And that that element of water definitely changes up um, how they would fix things. It also has some people sharing about uh, some uh, things that they would do to make improvements. Oh, okay. Let's hear some of those improvements. I know I did a pretty simple model here. So what are some of the different things that students would do here? Uh, Sam shared that maybe you could tie a rope to it so that you could pull it back. Ah, okay. So pulling, so kind of like tugboat style some way, somehow. We also had uh, Jimena share that kind of add some decor to it, adding a, a flag to the to the paddle boat. Definitely, flags are definitely a big part of ship life, right? I think it's a communication system and things like that. But I always also love that decoration. Probably on some of those sailing ships, on the sails, you'll see like nice colors, you know, where they look really nice out there on the water as well. You know, Mrs. Bystrack, I have a different. I have a question I wanted to share with you. One of our friends asked, "What is the hydro station all about?" So, could you kind of tell us a little bit about that? Sure, sure. So, the hydro station is a classroom. Currently, fifth graders come from Chula Vista Elementary School District. They come um, to this facility, which is located on Sweetwater Authority's desalination plant. So a place where um, they're cleaning water, they're pumping water from below the surface, cleaning it and making sure that um, that water is safe for use in parts of Chula Vista and National City. So a classroom is right next door and students get to learn about different careers in water, such as today, like a marine engineer. They also learn about careers, you know, with water, um, that, whether it's like a chemist or being a public relations specialist for water, all kinds of different careers. Um, that are matched with students' interests um, that are involved with the water industry. And so along with that, we get to do hands-on projects. We give some different challenges like you saw here today and have students um, use their creativity and innovation, even some coding, and they get to um, engineer some solutions to potential problems that we have related to the water industry. Thanks for sharing that. And speaking of challenges, I think we are ready for our Kahoot challenge. Perfect, perfect. So let's go ahead and get started with our Kahoot here. So today's title is um, Building Our Model Paddle Boat. So with that, question number one, let's figure out which of these is not engineered to move on water. So which is not engineered to move on water? Is it red triangle, a car? Is it orange circle, a sailboat? Is it blue diamond, a paddle boat? Or green square, a cargo ship? Let me read those again. Which of the following is not engineered to move on water? Is it red triangle, a car? Is it orange circle, a sailboat? Is it blue diamond, a paddle boat, or green square, a cargo ship? Again, we're thinking about which of these uh, different transportation or modes of transportation is not engineered to move on water. So we learned today that there's different things that you need to do to engineer products to move across that water. Uh, and it looks like our answer has showed up. So it looks like a car was definitely not engineered to move on water. So it looks like 24 of us did an awesome job um, thinking about which ones were engineered for water. So awesome. 
So it looks like, let's take a look at our scoreboard. We have Green Dove in the lead. Let's go ahead and move forward with question number two. So a force that pushes something forward. So we talked about this force today as a marine engineer. A force that pushes something forward is called, is it red triangle transportation? Is it orange circle propulsion? Is it blue diamond suspension or green square elevation? So lots of words there with the shun sound at the end. Let's try that one more time. A force that pushes something forward. This is also that force that marine engineers are very concerned with. So a force that pushes something forward is red triangle transportation, orange circle propulsion, blue diamond suspension, or green square elevation. Let's go ahead and see what answers we put there. Ah, so we have varying ideas here, but today we learned about that propulsion system. It's that force that moves something forward. So moving our cargo ship from one spot to another. Let's go ahead and go to our leaderboard here, our scoreboard. Looks like Hero Possum has taken the lead. Now our third question here, testing or assessing your knowledge of today's topic is who designs this ship machinery? So who might be responsible for thinking about the machinery? Not just the structure here today, but the machinery. So is it red triangle, the ship captain? Is it orange circle, the deckhand? Is it blue diamond, a marine biologist? Or is it green square, a marine engineer? So think about the role you took on today as you were designing that propulsion system, which is our machinery. So who designs that ship machinery? Is it red triangle, the ship captain? Is it orange circle, the deckhand? Is it blue diamond, a marine biologist? Or is it green square, a marine engineer? Let's go ahead and see what your answers were. Ah, so we have some very answers as well. Well, today you took on that role of a marine engineer, somebody who is concerned with that propulsion system and the machinery on a vessel. Let's go ahead and go to our scoreboard here. Before we go to our final question, it looks like Amiable Bear is in the lead. For our final question here, Number four, which is not used, so which of these is not used to power a propulsion system? So is it red, triangle, wind, and sail? Is it orange circle, a steam engine? Is it blue diamond, manpower? Or is it green square, a pulley? So earlier we talked about some different propulsion systems, um, which that we were thinking about which kind of things were powering those propulsion systems. So think back to that picture. What were the different ways of giving power to those propulsion systems? Was it red triangle or which one was not used though is what I'm asking you here. Is it red triangle wind and sail? Yellow circle steam engine? Blue diamond manpower, or finally green square, a pulley. So it looks like our final answer here is that a pulley was not one of those in the propulsion system. It's used with winds and, uh, the wind and those sails, but it is not powering um, that system. So awesome job there. Thank you to all of you for participating in this live Kahoot. Let's go ahead and check out in third place. It looks like we have Fast 10. In second place, it looks like we have Sturdy. I think it was Sturdy Dragon. And in first place, Amiable Bear has taken the lead. So awesome job. Thank you to all of you for participating, sharing your thoughts or sharing your responses with that Kahoot today. Now with that, 
Um, I want to let you know that if you enjoyed today's event, subscribe to our YouTube channel. All of these different live events we've had throughout this whole year are there. They are stored. You can watch them at your leisure. You can join in those different engineering challenges. Um, so subscribe to our channel, which is CVESD Innovation and Instruction. So we'll put that in the Q&A, and that's where you can find all of our past um, live events that have been recorded. Now with that, if that's talking about the past, but looking forward into next week, I want to invite you all to join my friend for our, our last live event of this school year. Join my friend, Mr. Coach or Coach Ramirez, as you are taking on a Building for Muscle Challenge. So Coach Ramirez will be guiding you through building for muscle. Now with that, I hope you enjoyed um, today's event. I hope you're going to continue to test those vessels, come up with some improvements for it, even add some cargo or different people you're transporting and see how that works out. I hope you guys all have a safe and healthy weekend and have a great afternoon.